Okay. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Town of Cicero Planning Board meeting. Would you please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, Mr. Abbey? Okay, pledge, allegiance. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic, United States of America. America. To the Republic, Republic for which it stands. For which it stands. One nation, nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and, and justice for all. for all. Thank you. And with that, we'll start with a roll call. Mr. Rosito? Present. Mr. Abbey? Present. Mr. Snyder will not be attending tonight's meeting. Mr. Boss? Here. Mr. Marizio? Here. Our planning board clerk, Cindy Chamberlain. Here. Director of Codes, Steve Procopio. Here. Planning board engineer, Mark Parrish. Here. Planning board attorney, Neil Germain. Here. Town board liaison, Nancy White. Here, sorry. And town board member, Judy Boyke. Here. Good to have the two of you with us tonight without that conflict of meeting. Well, it, yes, it's a pleasure to be here, I must say. Great to be back. <laughs> as always, the planning board will accept the public comment on any act of application that's currently before the board due to the fact that this meeting is being conducted virtually and a comment should be submitted via email, fax, or postal service. And the information for that is on the town website. And with that... We will go for the approval of the minutes. Everybody's had a chance to review. Any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. And do we have a motion for approval? I'll make a motion. Motion by second. Mike. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Don Bloss. Mr. Rosito. Yes. Mr. Abbey. Yes. Mr. Snyder is not here. Mr. Bloss. Yes. Mr. Marizio? Yes. And I vote yes. Motion passes. First item on the agenda is for minor subdivision. I'm thinking this is for the property at 9475 Bluff Circle. And A News and Romans, Tim Coyer is here to represent the applicant. Hello, Tim. Hi, uh, Tim Coyer, I News and Romans, Land Surveying. Um, yes, this is, we were on last meeting. Um, this is the six lot subdivision over at the Bluffs off of Bartell Road. What they're trying to do is use the existing lot six as a recreational use to put a tennis court and basketball uh, court on that lot. Um, I believe Neil and Steve will talk to this. And we've had a few conversations earlier today about the mechanism and how we're trying to go about this as far as uh, legalities, um, because it is a currently a uh, residential zone. There were some questions I know Neil had specifically on the proper route that we go about doing this. Um, but um, I'll let them talk about that, but I know that there were some questions uh, regarding that. As far as formality and what pro process we're taking? Correct. Neil, you want to jump? Yeah, in I, can, I can probably I can probably help with this. Okay, so what we're looking at here is they're they're trying to change the filed map because the filed map when they filed the subdivision had a notation that all the lots were going to be building lots. They built the houses on all the lots except for one. They want to file a new map to remove the reference to that that lot being a building lot. Okay, let, let's just say for the sake of argument that you remove that from the map. It doesn't change the zoning and classification or requirements of that particular piece of property. So the property would still be subject to the uses that are allowed in a residential zone. And those uses are, you know, single family residence, um, enclosed building, and you can go down the list you don't change any of the uses. Now, a tennis court is not per se in one of those categories, okay? So if, even if you removed it, you would get to the uses that you can have in a residential zone via site plan approval, 
and that would be a home occupation. That's not what they're proposing here. A golf course, not what they're proposing here. Public utility station, not what they're proposing for. Clinic, school, religious institution, community center, or RM. None of those things are being, I, I don't think that the applicant is looking to do any of those things in that piece of property. So removing that distinction still leaves you, the applicant, in a residential zone. Now, you should, it's important to note that when you, when we go through some of these things in the past, there are a zone like a commercial zone that says other allowable uses with planning board approval if they meet the intent. Residential zone does not give you that coverall where you can actually say, well, the proposed use meets the intent. So right now, the only application before you is for site, is for the uh, subdivision approval to file a new map and just omit the reference to building lot for that lot. What effect it would it have on that lot? It doesn't change the zoning classification and you're not really doing a subdivision. If you think about this further and there, we talked about, well, maybe there'd be some relief for the applicant under 270 of the town law. That's clustering. It doesn't help the applicant because this wasn't a clustered project and it probably wouldn't apply anyways. So there, the applicant should probably, I, I would imagine wants to time to reassess what they're actually going to accomplish here. Tim, correct me if I'm wrong. And maybe look at, there's another section of the um, town law that Steve and I just talked about that may give the applicant some relief. I don't know that it would, but at this point, even if you approved it, the applicant still, to my mind, could not build a tennis court or the recreational facility there. Um, it would have to come under, at best, Section 7, which would be community center. And then you're just passing the problem off to Steve, or he'd have to determine whether or not that's viable as a community, if you could call that a community center under the code, which kick just kicks the can down the road to, to codes and then back to you for site plan approval. So it's, you want me to get the, 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 the long story short, all we're doing, all they're asking to do is take a, take that designation off of one lot so they can try to build a tennis court there. And the answer to that, the second answer to that is like, what's next is, even if you take that off, you're still residentially zoned and you still can't do that. That use is still not permitted as far as I can see. Jim? And I know Dave is uh, listening to the applicant and I think my, I think the best uh, approach here is to, you know, put this application on hold and get with Steve and Neil and try to come up with another solution or another avenue that we might be able to approach if it's variances, if it's site plans, if it's whatever else, because obviously, according to Neil and everybody, this is just not going to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. Again, the only thing they're trying to do is put a tennis court and a basketball court on this lot. It's not like we're trying to, they're trying to do anything crazy. It's just, we're trying to get through the correct function of how to get to that point. Um, and Dave, again, and, and Terry's here as well. They can speak uh, for it as, as well, but I think maybe we need to sit down with Neil and Steve and try to come up with a, a, a possible different course of getting to where we want to get to. Right. Yeah, that makes sense to me. You know, we do have a public hearing. There were a couple of residents that submitted letters to the board. I believe everybody's received it. And, um, so, you know, it's probably best we leave the public hearing open at this point. Um, it, it's up to you because the applicant has requested a time to actually vet out the issues in this in his application so <clears throat> since he's asking for time the clock's not really running against the town as, a, as far as you know the time you have to approve this but you can leave the public uh, um, hearing portion of this open because if this thing morphs or changes and you want to tell the public that you know hmm. it's changed since we we were allowed to make comment on it that would certainly be within your discretion so, so the, 
the comments that were made basically were hours of use, lighting, if any, uh, what kind of noise could be expected from this use. And really there was some issues about trees, but I don't think that's an issue anymore. So those were the only comments that came from the public. So if the applicant wants to kind of address what they're thinking, what your thoughts are on those, and then uh, we can defer until we get to a different stage. Hi, uh, this is Terry Horse and Terry Horse Landscape Architecture. I can uh, talk about uh, the, the usage and address some of those comments if you'd like. Please. Um, okay, so I, do, I did submit, um, I don't know if you all got it, kind of a schematic plan of what uh, we're trying to accomplish that shows the, the tennis court and the bat half basketball court landscaping. Um, you know, some benches and a little a paved trail. Uh, Excuse to... me one second, can, can we get that put up? So I know it came kind of late. I can, I have it, I can screen share it if um, I did send Heidi a digital version of that. I don't know if who's ever running the meeting has that. Yeah, I saw, but I'd like to get it up. Mike, can you give her the ability to share please? Okay. Where the public can see it as well. How do I do that? <laughs> <laughs> Mike will have to walk you through that. Okay. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, there should be a uh, green screen share button at the bottom of your Zoom okay. meeting. Let me see. Okay, I see it. And here we go. There. Okay, can you see that? Beautiful, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so um, this is the site plan. Uh, to the top of the page are um, the moorings that subdivision towards the road and the lake is, and those, the four houses, though they're not shown on, on this plan are to the bottom of the page. Uh, so the, the four, four houses to the bottom are what this is serving. Um, so we can see in green, that would be the tennis court layout uh, and the gray is the half basketball court. Can you, and zoom, behind, can you, can you zoom in just a little bit please? Okay. Really put your testing your skills now. Okay, yeah, you are. Okay, how's that? Wonderful, thank you. Okay. Um, all right, yeah, that helps me too. So you can use your arrow to point, I believe. Here we go. All right, so back tennis court. So back here, um, if you're familiar with it, there is an existing row of uh, very well maintained evergreens that were planted with the, the subdivision, and behind that is a fence um, and the drainage easement and then uh, the properties to the north. Well, actually it's the west, <coughs> sorry. Um, so this would be the path that the neighbors would access to the tennis courts, a little paved place with um, probably a little, you know, umbrella table or two, a couple benches to sit on, you know, to change your sneakers or put your bag on. Um, we're gonna run the conduit uh, up there, but we are not having any lighting for this. Um, and the kind of would just be for an electric if they want to charge their phones or something like that. So it's not intended for um, um, lighting, <clears throat> excuse me. And then uh, we are running a water line uh, for uh, a spigot so they could you know, spray off and wash the tennis court surfacing and you know use that water for the landscaping as well. So we have a variety of landscaping, some more evergreen trees to the side, uh, small trees and um, you know, small shrubs and typical landscaping, you know, along the front of it there. So um, it will be a paved court. There'll be fencing around it. Um, and then the noises would be just, you know, the balls bouncing uh, <coughs> on the court surfaces. And since it's not light lit, there will be no nighttime usage. So, <clears throat> excuse me, were there any other questions that the neighbors had? Yeah, I, I did miss <coughs> one when I was the traffic. So you know, what, what's the intended use? Is it just the, the owners of the property? Are there gonna be guests invited, tournaments, that kind of thing? What can, they, what can we expect with traffic? 
since it'll be only um, those neighbors, so there'll be no additional car traffic there. Um, and so there'll be no large groups, you know, other than them, themselves. Um, and there's no new parking because it's not, since it's not a public space, it's not needed. Right, let's go through the board and see if there's any additional questions, Mr. Rosito. Um, there, one, one of the comments was uh, either the existing uh, trees and shrubs or new what, what would be put in place. Uh, one of the uh, neighbors commented about, you know, they, they've lost some of their view already of the lake, how much more screenage would be involved. Um, and a uh, question is, if this were approved some way, form, whatever, one of the comments also was about um, if it's recreational use, does that just limit them to a basketball court and a tennis court, or could it be anything deemed as recreational? As one comment was, a gun range, uh, I think somebody says a golf course, skiing, which I don't think is a concern, but those are my questions. If you can address uh, the landscaping, I'll, I'll address the, the rest okay. of recreational use. Yeah, so the, the existing trees to the back of the property, those will remain undisturbed. Um, and we are proposing, uh, for the most part, nothing really huge. Um, so no new buffers. Um, the, the evergreen trees to the side of the basketball court uh, won't be any bigger than the, that large, the, the trees to the back that are already. I, I have a photo of that too, of what that looks like, let's see. So that's the photo from the, the, road, the street, and that's that tree buffer, and that's the lawn in front of it. That's what this lot looks like now. You so it's very well maintained. Um, you can't see that yet. Oh. Oh, <laughs> do I need to? Oh, I got to. All right. I thought if I just pull it up to my screen. Oh, let's see. Okay, here we go. All right, now I got it. Can you see that? Yes, thank you. Okay, so that's the photo of what the, the site looks like, looking from Bluff Circle. So those existing trees here will be will remain. Um, and then, you know, this is just the maintain. Let me see, I have another picture. Nope, that wasn't for you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so I lost my picture. Let me get that back. Joe, does that answer your question on landscaping? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then Thank as you. far as recreational, we're not changing. There's not there's no proposal for the zone change. So it's not going to be zone reg um, recreational, zone residential. And the only things that would be allowed here are things that would be allowed in residential use or stipulated by the uh, by Steve Procopio or code enforcement. You know, correct me if I'm wrong on that. No, you're right. And I, I just want to like back everybody up for like one second. The stuff in front of you and the pictures and, and that would be uh, items for site plan review. This is not site plan review. You are being, it's really all about subdivision at this point. Assuming that they found some way to have that use they'd have to come back for site plan review. And then at that point, when there was a site plan application, you would review all of this. So this is a little bit premature. Okay, good point. Wanted to address the, the public hearing input, but yeah, that would be done under a site plan, assuming a site plan would be deemed necessary. Right. Okay, Mr. Abbey, any questions? Um, just quickly, uh, I'm just curious on how big is this flat? Uh, start with a half acre, an acre. Yeah, do you know the, the acreage of the lot? I don't have it in front of me. Yep. Quarter. And, and uh, it doesn't look like there'd be any uh, storage sheds or bathroom facilities included. It's no. A, about an acre of uh, property. Okay, thanks, Tim. And there's no storage sheds or uh, bathroom facilities proposed? No. Okay, thank you. I'm all set, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bloss? I'm all set at this time. Mr. Murzio, any questions? No, I'm all set at this time. I have none. 
Mark, Neil, or Steve, any comments? Mark? No, nothing here. Neil, anything additional? Neil, you all set? You're muted, buddy. <laughs> I read his lips, he said yes. Yes, I'm all set, sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. Steve, anything? No, I'm, I'm all set for now. All right, so we'll sit tight, Tim, until you come up with a plan and then we'll go from there. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is Perry Real Estate Holdings. This is for a site plan of a 4,800 square foot cold storage building on Tottenham Road. Jim, you got, you got the ball on this one as well, right? Yep, that is correct. Um, so we were here last uh, last meeting about this uh, cold storage uh, warehouse that the applicant's looking to use for his current landscape business. We made a couple of changes. We added some uh, landscaping, landscape trees along the north and south of the existing building. And we also added um, some actual maple trees in the front along the street side of this. Um, we added a note over on the left-hand side about no outside outdoor storage. We also added a note in the statement of use, no yard waste associated with their property management company will be dumped on site. That way they're not leaving like grass clippings or mulching, mulch stuff on the site when they're done Jim, with the day. Jim, can you put point. those plane up that you're referencing? <clears throat> yeah. Please. Can you see this? Yeah. All right. So statement of use, this is the, sorry, cold storage building here on Topman Road. North is up the page. Um, we added the no, no outdoor storage, um, and we also added the no, no waste associated with the property management company will be uh, dumped on site. Um, here are the got a row of uh, evergreen trees on the south side of the building, a row on the north side of the building, and we added the maple trees or deciduous trees on the towards on the road side of the building. Um, those are the only major changes to the to the map itself. Um, we included a, a light cut sheet to mark. Um, he was looking for that. We forgot to add that in the application. The only other comment that uh, we were going to address was the, that the architecturals had the wrong um, north, uh, north, south, east, and west directions on them. I don't believe we were able to get a hold of the architect to change them in time for the meeting, but he is going to change those. Well, were you looking for an approval tonight? I was uh, hoping so, yes. Can you show me then what the front elevation is gonna look like? Yep. Oh, I have the wrong thing up, I apologize. So this is the front elevation. I believe I'm still screen sharing, correct? Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna zoom in here. This is the front of the building from the road that you're looking at. Um, so as you can see on the site plan, here's the overhead uh, that, that shows up, two overhead doors. And I'll bring this back here. Here's the overhead doors, front of the building again from the road. Here's that overhang that's on that one side. And we'll go to. So that should actually be labeled east, correct? Correct, yes. That should be labeled east. I apologize. Like We're trying to get him to change this, but he wasn't available to change it. So this should be labeled east. This one should be labeled south over here. So there's the one overhead door. Here's the overhang. And if you go back to our site plan, 
again, here's the overhang looking at it from the south, and here's that one overhead door. Again, he just had the north, south, east, west labels incorrect on his plan. We're going to get um, revised sheets for that. And here's the south face, which is actually the north face. It has no doors on the north face um, that's facing the neighbors to the north there. And here is the west face. Again, no doors or anything over there. Which is not the west. Correct. Yeah, that's what was concerning me having that on the road branch. But, all right, that answers yeah. my question. In the, uh, the planning board did receive a letter from the neighbor, Mr. Earl George. He uh, was against the proposal. Basically said it didn't fall within the residential use, although this is agricultural and does, it doesn't allow more use under ag. And <clears throat> you've put some landscaping He's just north of us. You've got the landscaping. This is Earl George's property right here. Um, and yes, we have some landscaping over there to uh, buffer. Okay, we'll go through the, through the board for questions. Mr. Rosito, any questions? No, I'm all set. Thank you. Mr. Abbey? Yeah, I had a couple. Um, uh, one thing was I'm curious about the color. What colors uh, they're planning on using? Um, oh, go ahead. I see, I see medium bronze and almond. Yeah. That's right, the metal siding, I saw. With a <coughs> dark roof, I'm guessing. Yes. Okay. I was curious, this is a uh, landscape company that will is, uh, want to use this or build this? Yep. And uh, they, they won't be operating the business, per se, out of that location? No, but this is just to the store of their equipment, like their plows and their tractors and stuff, um, seasonally. Like, when they'll, in the summertime, they'll have the plows inside the building, and in the wintertime, they'll have their lawnmowers and stuff inside mm -hmm. the building. There's going to be nobody operating out of this building, so no, nobody's going to be there at all. They're just going to be in and out storing uh, their equipment. So for facilities, there's only electricity you take it? Correct. And uh, they have a operating office someplace else in the area? Yes, Mr. Perry has a, a operating office. I'm not exactly sure where that is right now. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you Chuck. Mr. Bloss? Uh, no questions. Mr. Maurizio? No questions from me. Mr. Remain. All set. Mr. Parrish. Uh, nope, we're all set with plans. Thank you. Mr. Procopio. I'm good, thanks. Mr. Rosito, will you propose the standard seeker? Yes, I propose our standard seeker, and that's a form of a motion. We have a second for the seeker. Second. Second by Mr. Marizio. Mr. Rosito. Yes. Mr. Abbey. Yes. Mr. Bloss. Yes. Mr. Marizio. Yes. My vote yes. Seeker passes. Neil, would you propose a motion for approval? Yes. We're going to move for the adoption of resolution approving the application known as Perry Real Estate Holdings LLC, Topman Road, tax map number 331 1.2, proposed 4,800 square foot cold storage building. This uh, approval is strictly conditioned on the following. One, the color schemes, renderings, and or elevations as presented by the applicant to the planning board in regards to this application shall be incorporated by reference into the site plan and the board's approval thereof. According to the actual project must substantially conform to the items as presented herein. Two, the legends on the plan submitted will be corrected to show the property, the property directional north, south, and west. And that is in the form of a motion. Do we have a second? A second a motion. Second by Mr. Bloss. Mr. Rosito. Yes. Mr. Abbey. Yes. Mr. Bloss. Yes. Mr. Maurizio. Yes. And I vote yes. Who cares? Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Next item on the agenda is for the proposed Dunkin' Donuts restaurant at 6360 East Taft Road. Welcome back, gentlemen. Hello, this is Bob Abbott. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Hello. We, 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 get, we can hear you this time, Bob. Oh, that's good. Finally. You did it right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you want to go through you the meeting since our last meeting? Uh, at the last meeting, um, we were asked to provide uh, some site plan review comment notes, which uh, we've added to sheet S1, uh, basically uh, talking about um, the parking calculation, uh, getting into the, uh, the employees and, and the occupants of the building. Um, and uh, those were all added to the sheet and I, I think um, approved by Mark Parrish. We were also asked at that time to provide a, a schematic landscape plan, which we provided a sheet S2. Um, basically, uh, this was laid out by um, the uh, landscaper that's been doing all our VSWs landscaping. Areas. And uh, it's a mi mixture of perennials and evergreens and um, uh, ornamental uh, planting so that was provided. And then you also wanted to hear from Onondaga County DOT, Mr. Fenskin uh, from DOT. I, I think uh, you might have a letter in front of you that uh, he approved the uh, project as it, as it sits, because we're not changing you know, any of the circulation or parking. And basically I think that was uh, what we needed to cover for this. Very good, Mr. Racito, any questions? Uh, no. Mr. Abbey? Uh, no, nice to see that uh, coroner is coming active again. I agree. Mr. Bloss, any questions? No, I'm all set. Mr. Marzio? We're straightening out that one section of parking, right? So it's not angled? Yes, because um, when I visit, visited the site, it seemed awkward the way they had it angled. Uh, because yeah. You have people coming in from two directions, and it it's kind of contradicts a vehicle coming that way. So I think by going with a 90, it, it, it helps everybody much better. Yeah, no, that's all I had. I'm, I'm very happy to see that uh, you guys are doing something with that corner. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Mr. Parrish, anything additional? Uh, no, no, no comments here. Mr. Germain? All set. Mr. Procopio? Uh, yeah, I would just want to mention as they, as they clean up the property, as obviously it has been maintained for a while, so they'll be cleaning it up. I want to make sure that they get the stormwater facilities cleaned up as well. They, they don't look like they've been maintained in quite some time and, and, and do need it. Yeah, Steve, uh, thank, thanks for mentioning that. I know that the town engineer had been out doing some inspections and noted that was an issue. Very good. Um, Joe, would you make the standard seeker motion, please? Yes, I propose a standard seeker, and that's in the form of a motion. In a second? Second it. Mr. Bloss, Mr. Receiver. Yes. Mr. Abbey. Yes. Mr. Yes. Bloss. Yes. Mr. Marizio. Yes. And I vote yes. Neil, would you propose a motion for approval? Yes. We're going to move for the adoption of resolution approving the application known as Kimco Realty LLC 6360 East Taft Road proposed Duncan Restaurant. This approval is strictly conditioned on the following. One, the colors, schemes, renderings, and or elevations as presented by the applicant to the planning board in regards to this application shall be incorporated by reference into this site and the board's approval thereof. Accordingly, the actual project must substantially conform to the items as presented herein. Two, the applicant will clean and repair the stormwater facilities as necessary. That's in the form of a motion. Do we have a second? Second. A second. It was four seconds there. Mr. Marizio. Mr. Macedo. Yes. Mr. Abbey. Yes. Mr. Bloss. Yes. Mr. Marizio. Yes. Can I vote yes? Welcome to the town. Again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is for Ink Corner Cafe, property at 5590 State Route 31, a proposed electronic messaging board. Hello. Hello. Yeah. On the Larry, can you give your name, your full name, please? Yes. Uh, my name is Lorenzo Frato Shiziano, short name just Larry. And I'm the owner of the In Corner Cafe on 5590 State Route 31. 
and uh, like to yeah we just want to replace one of the uh, one of the signs actually not the sign just the board with the electronic message board and uh, just run the appropriate uh, electricity for that and just uh, replace with not going to resize or anything just take the board the existing signage the board itself for the in corner cafe out and just uh, replace it with the electronic message board just like they are already on the streets like karate john like all car cares they have everybody's kind of going in the new stuff with the electronic boards yes we're getting a lot of them aren't we judy hmm. all right questions mr Recito. uh no it's pretty simple mr abby uh and looking at the uh, uh picture of what uh, proposed the top part of the top half of the board for the hour signs and t-shirts, uh, is that lit interior or is that lit at all? I'm sorry. The top half of the sign, which is for the signs and t-shirts. Yeah, there are two. The, is I'm that sorry. lit? No, lit? for now, just the cafe is going to be lit. It's They're very, very expensive. Uh, okay, just the bottom half for your cafe. Yes, that's correct. It's like ten thousand dollars just for that uh, electronic board over there. Maybe in the future, we'll. You're going to use your neighbor down the road to do it for you? Uh, no, we'll try to. Do, we are we are a signage company, and we'll try to okay. do it ourselves. <laughs> okay, just curious. Yeah. All right, that that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Mr. Bloss. I'm all set. Mr. Marzio. I'm all set. I did have a comment. I drove by the site and it seems to me like there's a lot of signage on the property that really wasn't approved with the site plan. There's like an ice cream cone on the wall. There's some signs out at the roads. Um, so what I would like to know is, are you willing to take down all those signs that are on the site that yes. have been approved? Yeah, that just in those times, it's a little bit harder to just trying to, you know, keep it up somehow. Because the other option is just closing. That's why we're kind of having the little ones. But that's why we go to the big one. Right. This one being the electronic board, we're not gonna. It's not gonna be any need for the other ones. Which yeah, I, uh, I understand the marketing, but we just don't want to sign pollution, right? And so hopefully with this, you'll be able to eliminate yeah. those. Yeah, all of save, them are gonna be terminated. Save Steve's office from having to come out and visit you. Yeah. Uh, Larry and I have talked about that in the past. You have talked about it in the past. <laughs> yeah. We'll have it in the motion. Hey, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Parrish, anything? Yeah, I just want to uh, make sure I did the, the site plan shows that this sign is going to be moved back to meet the setback. So it wouldn't be in the exact location that it currently is. Um, it's it, where, where the, the current sign is. So I just want to confirm that it's the applicant's intent to move the sign back to meet the, the 20 foot setback from the uh, property, the, the yeah. front property line. Uh, uh, yes, the, the the plan I submitted out the, 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 the ones they were when the cafe was approved like three years ago when we did move it back from the, the original site. It's already moved there. Like we moved it like three years ago. And right now we're just replacing uh, the one of the boards. Okay, uh, I'm looking at a Google Earth image. Uh, maybe this is old. I don't know. Um, but um, the previous was parallel with the store. Yeah, Mark. Mark, I understand your concerns there as well. That that site plan was to relocate the sign from the front of the building. There was two, a sign there on two with two uh, wooden posts. Yeah. And I asked Larry the same thing. I'm, I'm curious about its present location in the proper. From, yeah, maybe from I, let, let, let me let me share my screen and maybe you can yeah. indicate whether or not this is where it currently is. So is that where that currently is? I don't see, I don't see the screen yet. <laughs> uh, you, you're not seeing it? Uh, oh, hang on, I think it's the share button. There we go. Okay, so so that's that's not the sign that's there presently. Okay. All right. So it's on metal metal posts. Yeah. 
All right, and it, is it back more in this area? It, it, it is. Yeah, I, I, I went and visited recently and talked to Larry too, and I told him we need to confirm uh, that this, this, the proper distance back, but it's yeah. there. Right. So, so the 20 feet from the right-of-way line, not, not the road itself. Exactly. It puts it in about the second parking space here. Um, so that, that's, you know, for frame of reference, that's where it would put it back in, into this area here. Right, and we would have to correct that with the with the permitting if that is if that's not the case. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. I guess that's all I had. Thank you, Mark. Mr. Germain. All set. Mr. Procopio, anything additional? No, thank you. All right. Mr. Reseda, would you do this propose the standard secret, please? Yes, I propose our standard seeker, and that's in the form of a motion. You have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Bloss. Mr. Rosito. Yes. Mr. Abbey. Yes. Mr. Bloss. Yes. Mr. Marizio. Yes. And I vote yes. Standard seeker passes. Neil, would you propose a motion with the comments that were presented? Yes. You're going to move for the adoption of a resolution approving the application known as Larry Fontenot. Inc. Corner Cafe, 5590 State Route 31, proposed electronic message board. This approval is strictly conditioned on the following. One, the applicant shall display Amber Alerts when requested to do so by town officials. Um, the reader board signage will not display any neon loud or overly bright colors, and no messages will scroll for an interval of less than 15 seconds. There will be no flashing, oscillating, or scrolling of messages. The sign may be internally but not externally lit. Two, the applicant will remove other signs from the site prior to installation of the proposed sign. Three, the sign will be moved back to meet current setback requirements. That's in the form of a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Rosito. Mr. Rosito. Yes. Mr. Abbey. Yes. Mr. Bloss. Yes. Mr. Merzio. Yes. And I vote yes, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you so much. That brings us to the last item on the agenda. Speed Pro Imaging, this is for the Clinton Ditch property at 8478 Hardy Road, proposed tank signage. That's yes. Good. good evening. Good evening, how are you? Doing well, thank you, how are you? Very good, thank you. Would you like to present what you would, what you're looking to do? Um, Clinton, excuse me, Clinton's Ditch is looking to update some signage and have um, some exterior signage put at the entranceway of the building. Bob, do you, were you able to get the image for them? Uh, let me see. Okay, so I tried doing a screen share. Can you see that? Not yet. You need to confirm the share after you hit the share screen button. Frozen. Hmm. We're standing very still. Let's see. Allow permission. Okay, there we go. If it's just the photo that's on the attachment sheet, I can share my screen. Okay, okay, please. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. No, that seemed better. And want to review what you want to do? Yeah, we got it up. Okay, so basically they're just looking to put the um, the six foot diameter cap, which is going to be three layers of acrylic and the lettering as well. Oh, what's going on? <laughs> Bob's shirt now. <laughs> 
Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, is it sharing my screen now? Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, okay, so it's uh, yeah, putting the Pepsi bottle cap and the logo on the left of the building, and then putting the logos on the carbon dioxide tanks on the right. So when I saw this, I kind of felt like I was at a fairgrounds or something. Mm -hmm. that, that to me is excessive. It's, it's Excuse cans, me? Those cans to me are excessive. Mm -hmm. Feels like we're at a fairgrounds or something. It, you know, we, we kind of have uh, some guidelines on signage, and that's obviously going to be way over. That's my perspective. Okay. I don't um, know. I don't know that I would want to see that on eighty one in the town of Cicero. Um, I've had conversations with the customer um, about this, and they, and as well as their ad agency. And they are in the middle of hire, uh, having a hiring fair. And, and so they're looking to draw attention to that. But they're also looking to get have people from 81 get a better idea as to what Clinton's Ditch does, which is represent Pepsi. And right now, when you drive by, you really can't tell what they do. So that is what their ultimate goal is. You have like a square footage of what you're asking for for signage total, the entire building. Um, hold on, I I believe that was on the um, the permit uh, application. Let me have a look at that. I don't think the application accurately stated what the total square footage was. Oh, yeah, you're right. It does not. Okay, so um, the logos are approximately 100 square feet each that are on the tanks. And then the... Oh, let, let's hold off on that. Yep. I'm going to do the approximates. Let's go through the board and see if there's any questions at this point. Mr. Rosito? Um, is this, the entire tanks, are they considered part of the signage or is it just the logo itself? Well, they're Hello. painting. Oh, uh, is that... who's, whose call is that, Neil? I would consider the whole tank based on this color. It looks like a can. It looks like a, it looks like a giant sign to me, Steve. Yeah, that, that was, uh, that was my uh, opinion on it. I mean, your color of the, the uh, the tanks and the whole thing becomes a sign. That's why I recommend it here to the board. Yeah. yeah. Um, in regards to your comment, Mark, about, you know, uh, amusement park or whatever. Yeah, it does stand out. What if the, uh, the total tank wasn't painted blue and green, maybe the upper half, so it still maybe would look like a can, but not quite jump out at you. I don't know if that's our, for us to say or let them propose what they want, but I know that would tone it down a little bit. That's a good point. Any other questions, Joe? Nope, that's it. Mr. Abbey? Well, in regards to that, I have uh, maybe a suggestion that uh, maybe the tanks the way the, where they are in disproportion to a can of soda, if you use like the tap 50, 75% of it, make it look more like a can purport, proportion. Uh, that would cut that way down quite a bit. I can see their point about, you know, being extra colors. But on the other hand, it's, it's nice to know that Cicero has a uh, worldwide brand. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Bloss? Uh, mine's more of a comment on this, Mark. Uh, I, obviously, I've driven by there several times, and I also took note of the different businesses that are within a quarter of a mile of that, and those businesses got signs that are uh, very visible from 81. They might not stand out like Pepsi, but um, 
I, I think we need to, you know, on the information supplied to me, the logos are 10 foot high. Each nice. one, whether the Pepsi and the Mountain Dew, it says That's 10 feet approximately. Logo. That's the logo, but I think Steve, it would be Steve's determination. He's determined that it would be the entire tank. What if they just went with the just the logo itself on each tank? That would definitely tone it down. It would make me feel better. But I'm only one person. Yeah, I agree. It at first it looked kind of neat, but yeah, it's <laughs> I think it's, it's a little bit too much. It does look kind of neat, but I just um, Mr. Bloss, any other questions or comments? I think it's something we got to take a long, hard look at here. Yeah, I concur. Personally, I like to see him look like a can of soda. In my, just from my opinion. Well, I agree. A big one. Two big ones. Mr. Marizio? Yeah, I, you know, I think the, the signage on the building itself makes complete sense. I think it looks nice. Um, I'd like to see some alternative designs for the two. Uh, tanks. I like the concept. Um, I just think having it being a solid color might might be a little overboard. Yeah, I agree. The logos on the on the building tell you what they do there, certainly. No, but I, I do like the creativity behind the the tanks. I think it's it's good to see that they're uh, trying to do something there. Um, but just having it be one solid color with the logo, you know, maybe we could. If, if you guys could come up with something a little uh, less loud, um, it would it might fit better. Uh, Mr. Parrish, any questions or comments at this point? Uh, no, I, I don't think there's anything engineering wise here. I think this is up to the board uh, relative to what they'd like to see there. Neil, do you have anything? Uh, no, I'm all set. Steve? Nothing more, thanks. Well, it sounds to me like general consensus is that you'd like to see those cans toned down. Am I right with that? Yes. Possibly tone down the intensity of the colors, too. What color, too, you said, Chuck? Tone down the intensity of the colors. Yeah, just like we do with the, the messaging boards, right? That Mountain Dew color would not be allowed. But I think Yep can, has some input. And unless you have any questions, hmm. are you looking for a motion? Um, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I. I was looking to. Uh, okay, so what you'd like us to do is uh, go back to the drawing board and come up with a couple other options that we can come back and present to you guys again. Yeah, you know, I gave you my thoughts on on the cans. Yep. I think it's excessive, and it sounds like the majority, if not all, the board tends to agree with that. I like the concept, and it's kind of not. It does look kind of. I like the ideas. It's just that kind of signage is not typical and I don't think it's right for that spot, that location. I understand you want to sell your product and promote what you do there and you do it really well with the Pepsi sign on the building. I think just think that that's accepted. And I think that we're hearing that from the entire board. Um, could, could, we, um, could we look at the two signs separately? Like the one on the building, could we would we be able to go ahead with that one and then um, talk to you at a later date about the the uh, tanks? I don't have a problem with that. And when mm -hmm. you come back with the tanks, we're going to want to know square footage, you know, for sure. everything in the building. Mm -hmm. And if there's, I don't know if there's any signs out on the, in the lot at all. No. But yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that if the rest of the board doesn't. Would you consider putting the Mountain Dew logo to the right of the word Pepsi? No, what they're asking for at this point is just doing the Pepsi logo. Yeah. Okay. With, the, with the cap. On the building or on the tank? Just the building. The building. On the building. On, okay. Yeah. So that'd be a good start. Joe, would you do a standard seeker, please? 
Yes, I propose our standard seeker, and that's in a form of a motion. Do you have a second? Second. 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 Mr. Racedo. Yes. Mr. Abbey. Yes. Mr. Bloss. Yes. Mr. Murzio. Yes. And I vote yes. Neil, would you propose a motion to approve the Pepsi sign and cap that's on the building? Yes, you're going to move for the adoption of a resolution approving the application known as Speedo Imaging Clinton Stitch 8478 Party Road. This approval will, uh, will only apply to the Pepsi logo as shown on the building and shall not in any way approve the proposed tank signage. That's in the form of a motion. Do we have a second? Second. second. Mr. Murzo had the second. Mr. Rosito. Yes. Mr. Abbey. Yes. Mr. Bloss. Yes. Murzio. Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. That concludes our agenda items. I did have one topic of discussion. I want to talk with the board and particularly Nancy. Are you still here? Yes. You know, right now, when a site plan expires, when it runs out, it's at the discretion of the chairman as to whether or not it gets renewed. And I would just, just like to know what you all think about changing that. I don't think it should be the, the chairman. I think that the entire board should uh, review a request for an extension. And if, if we agree with that, it would be up to the town board to implement that. So I just wanted to get some thought on that, what the feelings were. We'll go through Mr. Rosito. Yes, I agree with you, Mark, because I know we had a situation before where it seemed like um, all the responsibility fell upon you, and I think we should all share it. Thank you. Mr. Abbey? Yeah, I agree. I think that's more of a fair way to do it. Mr. Bloss? I, th I think that's fair, and we, we all should share that responsibility for sure. Mr. Marzio? I'm always in favor of shared decision making. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not looking to get rid of responsibility. I just think that we all approve, we all should yeah. take a look at and consider extensions. So Nancy, with that, I'm gonna ask that you talk to the town board, if it's something that the planning board would recommend. If, if you all determine that it's a good idea and wanna make those changes as far as code, that would be terrific from our perspective. Okay, I'll get working on it. Thank you. Anybody else have anything? Yeah, I had a couple of things. I was curious. Uh, I'm talking about the Pepsi plant there. Yeah. I noticed that lot to the south there is all cleared. I was curious what was uh, happening there. Steve? Yeah, the, the information that I have, they they have um, an ideas of building another building or facility for their trucks. For Pepsi? Yeah, and, and I only I only found out by inquiring because I saw them cl uh, clearly as well. So I, I had to make contact with them and sure. we are, uh, so if they plan to go forward, we'll be making an application in your future. And the other thing I was just curious about was the uh, major uh, widening of that Mud Creek area there by <coughs> auto, um, Advance Auto along Circle Drive. That's What's that's the Dar that's the Darlings Brook project. Is that state or Nancy could probably speak that better than I can. <laughs> is that town getting around? I'm sorry, what? I I probably can. Uh, that's been ongoing for ten years. Yes, it's Darlings Brook, um, <clears throat> and they are obviously dredging and clearing out that. Uh, swale and everything to uh, they they have if they haven't already sleeve the uh, uh, tile under the road um, and um, they're connecting it back towards South Bay as well um, trying to alleviate that um, there's obviously some sort of a drainage issue and right now they're hauling truckloads of um, actual muck um, the reason uh, my husband works mm -hmm. at that mall and he was saying that the large dump trucks can only handle about six buckets to eight buckets from the um, to be loaded before because it's so heavy. Sure. My 
my question is, um, and I was going to ask this, do we know where they're hauling that muck? Because that obviously must be some sort of a hazardous waste, isn't it? Because of the, the runoff, um, because the, the drainage ditches over by um, Burdix has a, a oil slick on top of the, the drainage as well. So I'm just curious if you know, Steve, where they're hauling that muck. I don't know where they're hauling it, but I believe part of the, uh, uh, as you know, we were required to, 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 to clean that out because of the, center, yes. the pipes are in the road. And part of the requirement was the disposal of the material. Um, I couldn't answer specifically, but that was, that was addressed where it was going to be taken to and how it needed to be handled for disposal. Um, have we ever looked into the drainage uh, over by Burdix because of that oil slick that appears on top of their drainage at all? Not that I'm aware of. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure I've, I've seen the oil slick you're referring to. So, uh, uh, Well, anyway, I wasn't sure yeah. if now with this disruption of digging all that up, but that might have caused some sort of a back, back oh, flow. But anyway, it's $1.4 million, guys. That's what we are paying for. And then the state's going to give it back to us when they're all done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and we actually went out and borrowed that too. So there we go. That's quite a project. Yeah, it is. It is quite a project. You know, when it rains some, really hard, it works the way it was. Years, right? So getting some overflow in the shopping center and such. So it had to be addressed. Thank you. Anything else? Nope. Anybody Nothing else? from me. I, I've got a question. Yes, um, is there any data out there that we have from when they did the traffic study after you guys approved, um, this was before my time, the Chick-fil-A and Starbucks? So they did. A big <laughs> I, the reason I ask <laughs> is because I cannot, I, I cannot imagine that that traffic study came back with a positive review. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've almost personally gotten in an accident there. Mm -hmm. Somebody rammed into me the line for coffees, not just around the building, it's looped out onto route, uh, route 11. Um, I just didn't know if it's our board that takes a look at stuff like this or if that would go over to Nancy and Judy for the town board to look at. But it's one of the most common conversation pieces that I still keep having with people. And I know, I know you all agree. I, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here, but uh, I just didn't know if there were any actions or any studies that we could do to further look at that because it's the one way in, one way out is not working. If you'd like an eyewitness to it at that time too, my husband would be happy to do so as he travels between Walmart and Circle Drive. And he actually gets on 81 in Cicero and gets off because it's faster and easier to get back to work from both spots. Not Somebody, to mention going to Home Depot. Yeah, Home Depot loves that. <laughs> Mike, the state has done the study. In fact, they made a presentation. Judy, you were probably there at the town hall. I, uh, I was. Yeah, in fact, they did it with the planning board. Actually. Yeah. Oh, is this the, is this the, the one where they, they rated the entire section from Bear Road to Route? 30, uh, Route 31, and they said that there were no problems. Yeah, that one. But they, they the one they said there were the one the one where they said we didn't have a traffic problem. No, no traffic problems, and no. then okay. and then we did the one for Starbucks right after that, and there was no problem with that one either. Oh, I, yeah, I mean, I remember I remember seeing that presentation, and and I I chuckled at it because uh, <laughs> I'm clearly so they were looking they were looking at a different section of the road than we all are, but. <laughs> When, when you guys did the plans to actually approve the restaurants, uh, does the town do some sort of traffic study or is that all done from, no. from DOT? The applicant in DOT. And, and the supervisor <clears throat> has stated that there's some conversation taking place with the town and with Home Depot, I'm trying to improve that, the inner part of that development. I, I haven't heard from the supervisor directly. It doesn't really communicate with me much, but it's fine. Okay. Mark, Mark, it's my understanding that um, that whole parcel is owned 
and those properties are leased. And then actually it's, it is the, I believe the owner of Home Depot that owns that property, but those spots are leased out. My understanding anyway. So hopefully there's some conversation taking place. I'm not privy to it. Um, I know Mark, correct me if I'm wrong. I know when we were doing, I think the Starbucks, <clears throat> they were talking with Home Depot and trying to improve that exit out of the parking lot. And they really didn't want anything to do with it and threatened to close off the connection between Walmart and certain Wegmans and Home Depot. So I hope they I, don't do that. I, I use that to get to and fr I use that to go to Home Depot or to Chick-fil-A. I don't even try to get into the Home Depot entrance. It's uh, too I use it. Yeah, we didn't want that to happen. Yeah. I use it every week. Um, where was I going? I, you know, I get, I've gotten an email from somebody sitting in the, at the light and let me know how unhappy they were. You get a lot of a lot of phone calls on that topic it's probably our hot spot mm -hmm. so. yeah i didn't I, I don't mean to bring it up i just didn't know if there were any studies or anything else that we could further do to look at that or if it was something that the town had to do at the town board level no it's a good discussion and, and hopefully those those conversations are taking place i don't know if the, the two town board members here can talk to the supervisor and see what if anything is happening so it'd be enough that whole section of route that whole section of route 11 needs to be reconstructed the, re the biggest problem, Mike, that we, even after discussions because of other situations along there, is it's not a town road. And that's the biggest problem that we run into every time because uh, we're on the list. But they, so we have, no, we have no authority, even no. now it goes right through our town? Not with a yeah. lot, no. Just exactly. we, all we can do is recommend, but we can't do anything else. Any of our local representatives been part of the conversation to go to Albany? Well, right now Albany doesn't have any money, so they'll tell us you're mm -hmm. on the list because we've asked, unfortunately. So it's just a matter of the newness wearing off or unfortunately something happens that causes a major situation that needs to be readdressed and not by us. Okay. No, that's good information to know. I mean, it's just nice to be able to tell somebody something when they ask the question. And instead well, of being saying, yeah, I have no idea what's going on, if I can, you know. It's say, the hey, same situation that we have under the 81 bridge. Oh, yeah. Yep. Same I remember thing. that presentation, that's been, too. That's yep. been going on for 15 years that I know of. Well, they told us in that presentation they weren't going to redo it until 2035, so. Well, good luck. <laughs> yeah. I won't be seeing it. <laughs> well, in, in one, of, excuse me, in one of their proposals, didn't they propose the, the people that did the study a road uh, in back of all of those properties? Yeah, they proposed a road that went along 81 that connected. Run, yes, um, all the way to Bear Road, wasn't it? it no, it connected from um, Country Max down to... Just the road right before, um, right Pine, Pine Grove. over uh, Driver's Village there. Yeah. But there Pine again, Grove. who's, who's yeah. going to pay for the road? They got to get block. easements. Yeah. Yeah, like they stated, they, they, they study an awful long time before the end, <laughs> like, yeah. like the bridge. Yeah, I don't see it happening. <laughs> Good comments. Anything, anybody else? Do you have a motion to adjourn? They say for a motion. Mike made a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. Second. By the way, we have a new budget, guys. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> Everybody have a wonderful Thanksgiving. You too. Thank you.